Our lesson this week is about surface area of cylinders and prisms. So I'm pretty bummed that y'all won't get to make your castles this year. That's one of my favorite activities that we get to do. Um, you have to like create different 3D shapes and then find the surface area and volume of them and put them all together to create your castle. Um, so anyways, maybe you'll get to do it next year when we come back. I don't know, we'll see. But have no fear, you still get to do the work from it and learn how to find surface area and volume. So I know you are all so excited about that. All right, let's get started with a cylinder. So there is a formula for um, finding the surface area of a cylinder. Sometimes it's easier just to use the formula and then sometimes people just like looking at what the surface area actually is and then just adding up like the top and bottom bases and then the side. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If we were to unwrap this and create a net from it, I would have whoops, a circular base, one for the top, one for the bottom, and then if I were to unroll the side, it would actually look like a rectangle. So surface area is if I was actually going to paint this cylinder, um, I would be painting the entire outside surface of it. So I'd be painting the top, the bottom, and the side. Okay, not like the inside of it, just the outside of it. So since I have two circular bases, I know that I would need to find the area of both of those. So the area of a circle is pi times radius squared. And since you have two circular bases, we would need to double that. Then I need to add on this rectangular side. Well, I know that the length of that rectangle would be my circumference because if I was to unwrap this the same distance as this length of the rectangle would be the same distance around the circle. So remember that um, circumference is 2 pi times radius and then I would just multiply it by the height of this cylinder. So this is how you get the surface area formula. Okay, let me rewrite that a little bit nicer and neater. The surface area of a cylinder is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. Like I said, you can use this formula if you want, or you could just find the area of the top and bottom circles and then add it to the area of the side, okay? Let's go ahead and just use this formula because it is a nice and neat way to plug in um, our numbers and then spit out a pretty quick surface area of this cylinder. All right, so it wants us to use 3.14 and round to the nearest hundredth for pi. So I'm gonna start plugging in these numbers that I know from the cylinder. Okay, be careful here. They tell me my diameter is 16, but I don't want the diameter, I want the radius. So remember just half your diameter to get your radius, and so half of 16 would be eight. So the radius would be eight inches, so I'm gonna plug that in for radius. So everywhere you see R, you're going to plug in an eight. And then I know the height is nine. So the height of the cylinder is nine units, okay? And then we can just type this straight in the calculator and then round to the nearest hundredth. Don't forget to use 3.14 instead of the pi button on these. If you use the pi button, it's going to throw your answer off and a couple hundredths on the decimal place. So just once again, make sure you actually type in like 2 times 3.14 times 8 squared plus 2 times 3.14 times 8 times 9 
and that would give you 854.08 inches squared. Alright, so then you would just type that in and submit it. For this question, we're finding the surface area of a triangular prism. So instead of trying to use a formula, it's probably just going to be easier to find the area of each face and then add it all up. So if we were to paint this whole thing, we would have to find the area of each face and then add it all together. So let's start with the base shape, which is a triangle, which I will highlight in blue. Um, if you can think about what the opposite side of this would look like, there would actually be two of the same triangles. So let's go ahead and find the area of these triangles and then double it. So I know the area of a triangle is one half base times height. I can see that the base of the triangle is 12 and the height of the triangle is 8. So one half of 96 is 48, but there's two of those triangles, so I need to double it. So both of the areas of the base triangles would be 96 square inches. All right, now let's switch to these rectangle faces. Let me highlight this one in red. So I can tell that there would actually be two of these because there's going to be one on this other side as well. And since they are rectangles, or actually squares because they're both 10 by 10, so the sides are the same, I would have two squares that both had a length and a width of 10. So the area of a square is just length times width, so this would equal... 100 times 2, so that would be 200 square inches for those two faces. Now for the last face, let me do it in a different color. This bottom face down here, okay, would be made up of a length of 12 and a width of 10. So for this bottom rectangle, I would just have one 12 by 10 rectangle. So 12 times 10 is 120. All right, so now we found the area for all of these spaces, and now I just need to add them all up. So to get the total square inches, I would add 96 plus 200 plus 120, and that would give me 416 square inches for the total surface area. Alright, let's do another example together. Alright, we want to find the surface area of this prism. Same thing, just find the area of each face and then add it all together. So, let's go ahead and start with the bases. I can see that the base shape is a rectangle. So I would have two of these, and I can tell that the length and the width of these two rectangles are 9 by 15. So 2 times 9 times 15 is 270 square inches. Now let's move to two other rectangles. I have this one right here, and then I would have the side opposite of it. Okay, these rectangles are made up by 9 by 19 for the length and the width. So I would have 2 times 9 times 19, which would be 342 square inches. Okay, then finally we have the last set of faces. I would have this rectangle and then 
course the side opposite of it over here. So I would have 2 15 by 19 rectangles and that would multiply up to 570. So to get the total surface area we would just need to add all three of those numbers together which would be 1,182 square inches. All right, now we gotta do a little backwards work in action. We're told the surface area of this cube, but they wanna know what's the value of A. Well, since it's a cube, we know that all three of the sides are the exact same length. So if I found the area of one face, I could just multiply that by six because there's six faces that are all the same. So I know that six times A times A, because my length and my width are A, so the area of this face would be A squared, because A times A is A squared, would have to equal 1,350. So in order to solve for A, my first step would be to divide both sides by six. So I would get A squared equals 1350 divided by 6 is 225. And then I want to know what 1A equals. So the opposite of squaring A, or the inverse of squaring A, would be to take the square root. So the square root of 225 is 15. So that means each side would have to be 15 centimeters. And you could go back and check yourself. So I know that each of these squares, if it was 15 in length, 15 times 15 would give me the area of one of them. And then there's six different faces. So if I did six times 15 times 15, I would get what I started with, a 1350. So I knew that I got the right answer. All right, last problem. Same thing, we have to do a little backwards work in action. We know the surface area of the cylinder, and we have to work backwards to find the height. So I know the surface area of this is 116,261.64. And let me see if I can make this a little bit smaller. There we go. Um, remember my formula for surface area of a cylinder is two pi radius squared plus two pi r times height, or radius times height. So let's go ahead and fill in the information that we do know and then we can work backwards to figure out what the height is. Okay, so I know my radius is 99 inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in everywhere I see radius on here. So let's go ahead and evaluate what we can out of this. It's hard, I'm gonna have to write oh, really small. Remember to use 3.14 for pi. So let's go ahead and type in this part that I am circling in blue. Two times 3.14 times 99 squared and see what we get. And that equals 61,550 point two eight. Okay, now let's multiply everything that we can in that second term. 2 times 3.14 times 99. And that would equal 621.72. And we still have the H variable there. So I know these numbers look really awful because they're kind of big and they've got decimals. But it's okay, we just have a simple algebra problem now. So I'm trying to get the H by itself, so I need to subtract the 61,550.28 and bring it to the other side. All 
All right, so we need to subtract 116,261.64 minus 61,550.28, and we would get 54,711.36. Equals six hundred twenty one point seven two times the height. So now the last step would be just to divide by six hundred twenty one point seventy two. So if I divide both of those numbers. I end up with 88 for my height. So my total height of this cylinder would be 88 inches. Okay, this is one where you could also go back in, plug in height into your original formula, and make sure you get exactly what you started with. Okay, um, I know this is a lot of work and it's something new, so please give me any or please feel free to call me or text me with any questions you have. Hope you guys have a great week, and I will talk to you later.